Welcome to Digital Asset News to get top stories in cryptocurrency, digital assets, and break it down in bite-sized pieces. Today, hey, great stuff. First up, major milestone, Polkadot Treasury funds its first set of projects. And I think this is one of the reasons why Polkadot is in the top five. Also, Jeff Booth, the former CEO of Build Direct, a $500 million company, writes a book titled The Price of Tomorrow, where he talks about that Bitcoin is not just a deflationary asset, it is a must for every single person to have. And also just as a reminder, Uniswap is now available on Coinbase. And if you didn't realize, Coinbase has got a hefty stake in Uniswap, and it's why I believe this coin is gonna go over $20. And we'll get into the market in a second, but just so you know, every week we try to do a donation. And the one that we'd like to donate to the most to is Dog is My Co-Pilot. If you don't know, they take dogs and cats from high kill shelters and the pilot flies them over to areas where these dogs and cats are actually in demand and the shelters have no dogs and cats. So it's a fantastic uh, charity and it's one that we try to donate to every single week. So we're gonna do that right now. Click the donate button. And of course, without you watching the videos, we couldn't donate to this charity. So thanks so much for watching, really appreciate it. Let's donate 50 bucks, that's a percentage of what we have. I'll cover the transaction fees, submit. And there we go, $50 to a worthwhile cause. So again, thanks for watching. Let's jump into today's video. First up, lots going on, lots going on. It is September 18th, Friday, everybody's favorite day. And uh, I'm gonna make this video kind of short. I just did a, um, a video, a podcast with Alex Mascioli. It'll be up in the next hour or so. It'll be a premiere. So if you uh, wanna hear some like behind the scenes type stuff, uh, Alex Mascioli is the um, one of the heads of the Quant Institutional Investing. And this guy's got his pulse on everything. So if you got time, stop by in an hour. Uh, I'll be there, just, chat, just do a little chat. But let's take a look at what's going on in today's market. We got Bitcoin. 10.8, I was kind of hoping it would get above 11 like everybody else, but uh, here we are, it's pretty much steady. 3.76 for Ethereum, not too bad. Tether's Tether and XRP, hey, 24 cents, what are you gonna do? Polkadot rocketing up in that number five position at $4.7 billion market cap. So we'd like to see that. Uh, Bitcoin Cash, number six. Again, I think it'll be flip-flopping Polkadot over the next couple of weeks. Binance coin, damn seven, look at that. And Chainlink taking a massive dump, and it, but it still is above $10, which is amazing. I thought it'd be like a nine anytime. So just get ready, because I think it's gonna fall some more. Litecoin, Bitcoin SV, nothing too fantastic. Neo of 5.8%, I don't have it, but if you uh, held it, congratulations. I just didn't, I sold it a long time ago. And then uh, what else we got? What is this guy right here? Uniswap, have you guys heard of this, Uniswap? Anyhow. Of course you have, because we've been talking about it all the time. So Uniswap is up 12% for today, almost $8. So everybody who has used Uniswap before September 1st, I uh, inaccurately said September 15th in my video yesterday. Uh, before September 1st, you got 400 Uniswap. If you haven't watched the video, uh, watch that. It was uh, yesterday. And when it when it first uh, was announced, it was right around $3, 250 somewhere around there. Now we're at 780 And just so you know, I'm just going to leapfrog into the uh, article where it talks about this. Uniswap is now available on Coinbase. Isn't that amazing? 24 hours on Coinbase. Unbelievable. Well, not really, but that's just how it is. But just so you know, Coinbase holds uni tokens and an equity interest in Universal Navigation Inc., the company developing the Uniswap platform. Coinbase intends to maintain its investment for the foreseeable future and maintains internal policies that address the timing of permissible disposition of its digital assets, including uni tokens. So if you don't think it's going to jump up uh, massively because Coinbase is going to be pushing this, uh, I think you're out of your mind. So I will be holding on to my uni token for quite some time. But I will say this, I believe in how they handled this. It wasn't some crazy sushi swap thing where the chef just you know, ran away with the spoon. <laughs> the dish ran away with the spoon. Uh, I mean, the chef, he took 14 million out, which is for the developers, even though he is a developer, but he just took it and said, I'm taking it. And then all of a sudden he, he put it back, said, I'm sorry, and he effed up. Um, so, I mean, I commend him for that. I don't know why he did it. There's a lot of theories, I don't wanna get into it. But uh, for Uniswap, they said, hey, Here's what we're gonna do. We're going to 60% is gonna go to the community. Everyone's gonna to go to uh, advisors and developers and everything else. And it's gonna really all go back to make everything great. And I can get behind that. I'm a supporter of that type of action. So Uniswap, I salute you, good job. All right, let's jump into today's top stories. So first up, um, I am biased, <laughs> in case you haven't realized that. But uh, I own Polkadot. Uh, I own Bitcoin, Ethereum, uh, Chainlink, Cardano, EOS, Polkadot, Theta, 
and some other ones, uh, XRP. Um, but when I talk about these things, it's because I'm biased. I try not to be, but it just kind of slips. It just kind of slips out. So just so you know. But I thought this was fascinating that Polkadot Treasury is already funding its first set of projects, and they're doing it in a specific decentralized way, and that's the most important thing. So what's going on here? So the fund management arm of the Polkadot team, known as the Polkadot Treasury, has just funded its first set of projects. With rival projects like Ethereum still fund uh, projects in a centralized manner through the Ethereum Foundation or consensus with Lubin, Polkadot has adopted the Treasury as a way to ensure transparency. To get funded, a project must be proposed by a member of the Polkadot community and it will be subjected to a vote by the entire community and only gets funded if approved. So the community has to bring it forth. They all have to vote on it and they all agree on it, which I think is awesome. That's how it should be. The community is made up of holders of Polkadot's native token DOT. Hey, that's me. And the funds managed by the Treasury Council, which is a group of people elected from within the community are generated from transaction fees, slashing and staking inefficiencies, and so are essentially raised from the community to fund projects that give traction to the network. So um, again, I mean, I can't say enough about how positive this all is. I think this was the whole idea behind decentralization, not to get caught up in a centralized place and have whales come in and venture capitalists buy up everything and they get rich. That's not how it's going to happen. It's all about the community. And I can... This is why I'm gonna hold uh, Uniswap because I mean, I might lose some money here and there as it dips, but I don't care. I like what they're doing and I'll support it because that's just how I feel. Lastly, it states, uh, the first round of funding was approved for projects in three of these key areas, namely infrastructure deployment, continuum operations project and software development proposals. So great, they're getting things off the ground. They're doing the things that need to be done to launch it in the stratosphere. And I can totally get behind that. With the establishment of the treasury, that ensures transparent, that's a big word, transparent funding of projects through community votes. Polkadot may be on its way to earning a name as a leader in true decentralization in the ecosystem. So let me know what your thoughts are uh, below, but I had just read a fantastic book. It was called The Infinite Machine. And it was, the, it was the whole backstory behind the founders, co-founders of Ethereum. And, it, and like I said, it goes all the way back to like when Vitalik Buterin was 17 years old. And it goes through all of them, Gavin Wood and Charles Hoskinson and Lu, Joseph Lubin and all these guys and how it all came to be. And I got to tell you, it's eye-opening, especially for Charles. Charles didn't have a good time in that whole group. Uh, I'll just say that. And Gavin Wood, who is the founder of Polkadot, really was the CTO, the chief technical officer that really got things running. Vitalik has a great mind and he was the one that envisioned this, but it was Wood who really built everything, not everything, but a large part of it and made it run. So when I see something like this, there, there, this guy, Wood, he's a workhorse and he can get things done. He's already done it before. Now, if they can build everything else around him, like marketing, analysts, the whole infrastructure that they're gonna need to actually you know, blow up, Fantastic. They're going to go way far, and it's why I invest in the polka dot. Let me understand in the comments section. Let's move on. Last up, I thought this was an interesting little piece. Um, we had talked yesterday about Anthony Pompliano, and he had Michael Saylor, the CEO of MicroStrategy, in, and, and that gentleman just talked about why he and his whole billion dollar company bought half a billion dollars worth of uh, Bitcoin. And really, this came down to this. It, he said, Look, uh, money is on fire right now. And if you had that in your treasury, you were just losing money. And that's stupid, essentially what he said. And he also talked about how the asset inflation is going to 25 to 30% asset inflation. So if you don't have assets or you don't have a, a, a deflationary hedge or a hedge against the market, uh, you're going to be in a world of hurt. And that's why they put so much money into it. And that's why I believe that a lot of companies over the next three, six, and 12 months are going to follow their suit because they're like, wow, Paul Tudor Jones did it. Michael Saylor did it, they, you know, uh, Fidelity Digital Assets did it, TD Ameritrade did it. We need to do the same thing. And that's how I see things. But this is another reiteration of the same uh, theme. This is Jeff Booth, and he wrote a little book uh, called Price of Tomorrow. And here's what he says. The co-founder of Build Direct, if you don't know what Build Direct is, it's okay, I didn't know what it was either. Um, Jeff Booth is the founder of Build Direct, which grew to 500 million in valuation. It's an online platform for getting um, home improvement supplies that you can buy just online, have it shipped to you. It's kind of like the Home Depot, but online. 
And, you know, 500 million valuation, not too bad. Anyhow, he published a financial book earlier this year entitled The Price of Tomorrow, Why Deflation is the Key to an Abundant Future, which I was like, hmm, deflation. I don't know if that really works out, but um, yeah, sure. He notes that even before the coronavirus pandemic wreaked havoc on the economy, the debt, this is, an, this is important, stood at $250 trillion in a global economy valued at 80 trillion. So let me do some quick math here. You are in debt, uh, 250 trillion, and you have 80 trillion. So you're just a little bit short. I'm just gonna guess, uh, not good with math, but that seems pretty ridiculous. And the most concerning part, however, is that 185 trillion of the total 250 was added just over the last 20 years alone. So uh, these central banks policies, we need something that is not a quantitative easing, is a quantitative hardening. And we need something that is set in stone and those are Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, digital assets, and it's why companies are going to FOMO in like crazy over the next 12 months, and I truly believe that. Lastly, it states why owning Bitcoin is a must. Going further, Booth posits that countries around the world now have only two choices. One is default through deflationary depression, which would include the collapse of the banking system, which really wouldn't be so bad. The banks do need to go away. They are worthless. Uh, I, hold on, let me, let me say this again. The banks aren't worthless. There's a lot of great things, right? I mean, if you're in the wild, wild west in the 1800s and you had to put money underneath your pillowcase, you, chances are you need a little bit safer place than that. So banks have done their job. However, the problem is, just like it says in Batman, you die the hero or you live long enough to become the villain. And that's what we got. The 2008 financial crisis was all started by central banks. And all these different things that they're doing, I mean, the... Um, quantitative easing that they have right now the fractional reserve lending where you know you you give 100 bucks they lend 100 bucks and then it just goes on the balance sheet where there's no money that's that's even created it's just out of thin air it it can't work like that and that's the problem with central banks so i mean if the bank system does does collapse hey we've got one in the wings and it's called defi cryptocurrency digital assets so why not? The second option would be default through hyperinflation. Nobody wants to be willing uh, bundles of cash to go buy bread like in Germany. So forget that. In my humble opinion, Bitcoin is a must, not just for your wealth, but as a lifeboat. And there was, I was talking to Crypto Love on one of the shows, and he said that, uh, you know, I have this, this uh, fantasy that Bitcoin will be the world reserve currency. And I was like, that's, that's crazy. That'll never happen. But now that I read this article, and I'm like, you know what? Um, if we could, if everybody could just get a Satoshi, you know, uh, maybe, maybe one Satoshi could be worth $10 or whatever it is or what, or whatever it would be in the future. And it would actually be, make a lot of sense. So with what's going on right now, I'm worried. I'm worried. And the only thing that gives me comfort is that I have what, what, uh, Palihapitaya, Shamath Palihapitaya says, which is I have schmuck insurance, which is I am betting against the traditional markets and the banks, and I hold a lot of Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, and digital assets. Let me know what you think in the comments section, but I want to talk to you real quick about a comment that I got, uh, which talked about Coinbase. I've been given a lot of um, malcontent towards towards uh, Coinbase, and I really need to think rethink my position, and I'm going to talk to you about that right now, so let's jump in the office. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the office. It is Friday. The best days, right? The best days uh, if you have a job. I just work from home, so it's like every day is kind of like a Friday or a Monday. It just depends. But um, I, I want to do this. It, it was the Q of the day. It was really a statement of the day. It was from in the comments section about a video that we had done yesterday, which was Coinbase listing uh, Uniswap. And uh, I got to tell you, I did not see that coming. And here we are. Although, if you really think about it, I mean, it, it makes a lot of sense because they're, they're doing a lot of things with DeFi, uh, just like Binance and just like Crypto.com. So, you know, Coinbase is not the one to be left in the dust. So, like, you know what? You do that, we'll do that, no problem. So the comment I had, and this really comes about from my own experiences uh, as far as Uniswap, and this is from Ed Cross, and I have a problem with Coinbase, and I have a problem with Coinbase because they go down at the most inopportune times. Even though it's a billion dollar company, it seems like they can't figure out these computer glitches. Sure, whatever. It's a weird thing, because every time I go to Amazon, it's always up, and it's always taking my money. What are you gonna do? But uh, Ed makes a very good point. He says, you know what? Um, Coinbase is a very user-friendly on-ramp, but it's also very use easy to buy and sell and learn about crypto. I think it's a big thing. 
learning about crypto. Only Binance does that other part where they have like a Binance Learn, uh, Coinbase has it, Coinbase Learn, where you can learn about all the different things that they list. And it's very well done. It's not an extravagant production. It's uh, usually like three or four videos, two minutes in length of every single thing they have out there so people can learn about it and understand it so they're not just like throwing money at nothing. So uh, that's a good point. And it's also very easy. If you are new to the space, which I expect a ton of new people to come in, um, Coinbase is my, my recommendation if you want to, you know, just for ease, just for ease of use. And um, there's one more part, which you get to in a second. But he says, uh, compared to other, everything else I've tried in the U.S., uh, I would not have gotten to crypto if it was not for Coinbase. And then the second part is, is, he says, I love how everyone complains about Coinbase fees, but they say, oh, Uniswap is the future. Uniswap uh, is the greatest of all time. But Uniswap costs way more than Coinbase to use, LOL. And I said, hey, that's a great point. I got to bring that up. So uh, yesterday we saw the ugliness in action, okay? I mean, everybody and their mom went to go and, and claim their, their unit tokens. I did a video about it, I'll link at the very end. But it was a very easy process and you got 400 just for using Uniswap. Uh, I said September 15th, but it was actually September 1st or before, or before September 1st. So there was a lot of action going on. And the problem with a lot of action is that you have to use a lot of gas, uh, Ethereum gas, to get your Uniswap tokens. On top of that, uh, because there's so much congestion, as the day progressed, I heard about a lot of people, it was like like me to get my 400, cost me about $15 in gas, no big deal. Which I must remind you that in 2017, when it went up above a dollar, people lost their minds of, uh, at that point. Now here we are at 15 bucks, just keep that uh, in context. And then I was looking through the, um, uh, the comments, I would see people say it was 20 and 22, then 24 and off you go. So I was just curious and I went to take some of my, my uni tokens and I, wanted, and I went to Uniswap and I went to exchange them for Celsius tokens. We don't know, love Celsius, fantastic project. And uh, it was like it was like 30 bucks. It was like $30 at that point. And I'm like, you are out of your effing mind. There's no way I'm gonna pay $30 to get $20 worth of Celsius or whatever I had. It was just, it was crazy. So, there is a good point to that. Coinbase, now, and, I, and I had just seen that Coinbase Pro was going to start um, uh, having small fees to take cryptocurrency off of that exchange. But before, there was no fees to take uh, any kind of cryptocurrency off the exchange. Same thing with Celsius. They have no fees to take cryptocurrency off their exchange. Will that um, be different in the future because of what's going on with Ethereum? Potentially, and uh, that is a problem. Also, uh, I have a one-two punch. And there is a, a spreadsheet that's in the description of every one of my videos, and it goes over all the different types of exchanges and wallets and decentralized platforms that I have personally used and what I recommend. And it break, breaks it down by, by, by fees and what to expect and everything else. You can look for the link. Uh, it's in the description. It looks just like this. And then I'll take you over there. And uh, you can use, at the very top, there are affiliate links. You don't have to use them, but if you use them, you get 10 and $25 just for opening up an account. And if you know anything about the last bull run, I highly recommend you have many, many on and off ramps because if not, uh, you could be like me where you get locked out because there's so much action going on, Coinbase being one of them. So when we talk about that and all the fees and everything else, my one-two punch is uh, Celsius and Voyager. Celsius I love. I do not recommend to buy anything there because there's a, it's a, there's a fee of 3.5% because they were not... Uh, they weren't set up in the beginning for people to buy everything. It was all about uh, putting your cryptocurrency in there and getting fat uh, interest on your cryptocurrency. Like, like Bitcoin is like 6.25. Sometimes it goes to 7, sometimes it goes to 5, just depends. Uh, USDC is like 11 or 12% and, uh, you know, everything in between. So that's what, what Celsius is all about. Also, uh, Alex Mashinsky, pretty smart guy, uh, done a couple of billion dollar uh, companies. So he, well, he's in it for the money. I think he's just in it to help the space. But on the flip side is Voyager. And Voyager is the one that I recommend because one, it's super easy to use um, and it's anybody can use it, right? But there's a problem with Voyager that I saw that I was trying to transfer $100 worth of USDC off of Voyager into another wallet. And it cost me eight bucks. So I was like, that is 8%. However, you have to understand with Voyager, it's a flat rate. So if you move $100 
or $100 million. If you got that, congratulations. But you know what I mean? You, it doesn't matter how much you use, it's still a flat rate of eight bucks. So 100 bucks is not worth it. 1,000 bucks, 10,000, okay, now we're, now we're talking. But just so you know, it's just all a flat rate. And that's one of the problems. So the ideal exchange for me is to be able to take my fiat money and purchase cryptocurrency, because at some point I have to, and then be able to exchange that cryptocurrency for anything that I want to at any point. And the fees are, you know, relatively low. And I'm able to take off 100% of all the different cryptocurrencies that I bought on that exchange into my Nano Ledger if I so uh, desire. And or they do loans or they do a fantastic interest rate. So that's all I'm asking for, just, just, just the basics. But uh, I, the last thing I'll say is this. I have poo-pooed all over Coinbase for quite a long time. However, after yesterday, I'm going to have to give them more of a look. And I know people will say, ah, well, they're shady and they do all this and this and this. Well, guess what? Uh, the interest or the fees are a little bit higher. That's true. But uh, to take things off, it's not that much. And uh, they're super easy to use, especially for uh, people here like, like Ed who, who talks about it. And right now, if you want to buy any other type of thing uh, as far as like on Uniswap, well, you're going to be paying a lot. Now, having said that, I will say that Coinbase has a limited amount of tokens and uh, the tokens that they put on there are usually the ones they are invested in. If you don't think they're not invested in Uniswap, watch my video from yesterday. So, but it's business, it's a free market and that's just how it is. So I'm not gonna begrudge anybody. I'm a businessman, I've got a couple of businesses and uh, really it's uh, as long as you are as ethical as you possibly can be and you're not hurting anybody, then go ahead and do it. I'll leave that up for you in the comment section. All right, so that's it, so uh, let's jump back. That's it. So I hope that made a little bit more clear in my position at Coinbase. But uh, I would like to give some some random shout outs just to the members who've joined up at Digital Asset News. So uh, Juan Rizzo, Rizzo, R I Z Z, Rizzo, just Rizzo. Uh, we got Mark, Melissa Davis, Sam Keith, Sergeant Crypto. Also have another YouTube channel. You should check that out. Uh, we got K Newman. I am not I. M A Donald Davidson, who kind of looks like Bill Clinton. And that's it for today. So thanks so much for checking out the video. I really appreciate it. Uh, if you like this type of videos, there's gonna be two more that's gonna pop up on your left and right. So uh, check those out if you got time. And also don't forget, I will be on Alex Maschioli's show in about an hour. So I will send it out to all the subscribers in the community tab. Um, so hopefully YouTube sends it to you. You never know, they like to not do that. And that's it. So see you on the next one or see you at Alex's show, live from here.